wonderful cast and director of Devotion. Uh, just want to, yes, dig right in. Woo! With you, sir, our maestro, you have introduced the film before and talked about how you didn't want to make like a 90s version of this story. Can you talk a little bit about what that means, making it now? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you tell stories that sort of, you know, center or at least are sort of thematically like overlooked by, um, you know, racial inequality or um, or anything like that, I, I, I think you can look to a large canon of films that, you know, play that very uh, <laughs> overly simple. Um, um, and I think one of the one of the things that happens when that occurs is that, you know, your black characters don't have an inner world. Um, so step one and just, you know, being introduced to this project, being introduced to Jesse Brown for real, I think was just to, and granted we had a very, very, you know, beautiful bedrock and foundation in the script that I first read, but um, it really was just to open it up and, and to explore Jesse through a modern lens. And then tied to that also just like show that the conversation has changed since 1950, but how can we, even in a period piece, I put in air quotes, um, how can we tell a story that's for today? Yeah, I love that. Um, for all of you, what has it meant to kind of shine a light on this incredible story, especially now? Slightly loaded question. Go on. <laughs> um, th this is a movie I've wanted to make for many, many years. I uh, found the book six years ago, and um, I'm just so thrilled and honored with how it's come together. Um, this group of actors is, in my opinion, the most exciting group of actors in the business. The fact that they're all on one movie is incredible. And the <laughs> fact that they all put their heart into telling this story, because it's not a story that it's just, hey, we're not just acting for entertainment's sake. We're really doing justice to a, to a, a group of people that are real, that, that put their skin in the game, that really changed the world and, and changed... Um, I mean, I'm just... I, I, I just I'm so thrilled and honored to just be a small part of this thing, and uh, I, the fact that it's come together at this level is just unbelievable. So, yeah. it's a really intense way to tell a story about love. Mm. Yeah, it is a really intense way to tell a story about love, and and, and the, the 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 thing that's so th sort of thrilling to me about it is that it's it's a it's a love story in the truest sense of the word because it's actually all encompassing. It's not just the extraordinary love story between these two extraordinary women, people and this extraordinary woman and this extraordinary man, but it's the, the love story of all of these men together, um, the, the passion for what they do, the passion for who they are, and the, the way that they have found to rise themselves above their time, the limitations of their time, which, unfortunately, is still a lesson for us today, it makes it an important piece and a, 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 a worthwhile piece to, to, to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. How about the rest of you? Well, mm -hmm. They said it pretty beautifully, but I would say, um, you know, this is something that actually happened, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's easily, like, we, we I didn't have any idea of all, about this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and I think reading the book, hearing these stories from some of the families that um, were still here with us, it was just phenomenal and then to put it on the screen so beautifully like JD choreographed and, and, and directed us through this it, it's it's a film I think everyone should see it's honestly um, phenomenal yeah. I mean I got the script and then I had a conversation with JD and then I went and started to do research and the more I researched the more stories I heard the more interviews I listened to with Daisy the more um, first person narrative I got, I was more and more invested. And then to go back to that conversation with JD and to be able to tell the story the way that we did and it not be this trope and it not be this really typical way that people are used to seeing these characters in these kind of situations, um, that's where the excitement comes in. And then obviously, you know, being able to work with all of these incredible people, this is one of my first films. And so um, to have that challenge and to show up and, and to tell JD, like, I'm gonna need you to push me. I'm, I'm going to need you to push me because we have to be able to tell this right. Um, it's, it's been an amazing experience and to be able to see it all come together the way that it has come together is far beyond anything that I could have ever even known to pray for. Mm -hmm. So great. I, I just say um, devotion is in the canon of 
things along the lines of um, the Troy epics, um, the stories of um, um, Oedipus and Agamemnon and, and the Odyssey, and, and that insofar as what? Insofar that you know, these stories were told to uh, bring about catharsis uh, because what the warriors and the families had gone through was so much. And so when the soldiers would come home in ancient Greece, the players would come out and, de and tell the stories. Because when you're in it, you're holding it, you're yeah. feeling it. And, and, and there's an illness inside of you, that, that hatred, that fear, that anger, everything that you were holding in war. And then the players would come out and tell the story for you. And you could see it, and you could witness it, and you could purge yourself. And this story, devotion, does that. Um, not just for military families and, and those who have served, and it does, but anyone who's loved, anyone who has left someone they've loved, um, anyone who has had to be by themselves, it, it, it gives them an opportunity to experience that, to watch us play it out for them, experience it for them, and then to grow from that. Um, Oh, yeah. yeah. I love it. Oedipus yeah. and Agamemnon. I was not expecting that reference, but I love it. Amazing. Um, Welcome. What, what, <laughs> what interaction and involvement like, have you had with the families? I don't know how, how close or, or what. Yeah, I mean, so I'll, I'll start with Glenn, you yeah. know, um, as, the, as the person who has found the book and been with the project the longest and, um, you know, has had the benefit of meeting Tom Hudner, um, and Tom had unfortunately passed before uh, I became a part of the project. Um, so I think, you know, truly starting with Glenn sort of laying the bedrock of this is a movie that we would have to make with them. Um, um, and, you know, as that process has continued, like getting to meet more of the Hudner family, you know, for introducing Jonathan and Christina to, you know, the Brown side of the family, you know, but there's this really there's this really odd thing because, you know, Jesse has not been with us for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the alchemy required and, you know, sort of creating him for the screen, you know, is this really kind of beautiful collection of mm -hmm. little pieces here and little pieces there. And what have we read and what does the family like still say and what do they laugh about and what, what do they know that has never really been revealed. And so it, the, the process was, I think, very different for putting Tom and then putting Jesse on screen. Um, but that said, we've been incredibly grateful and lucky to have them involved with it. Uh, they're here in Toronto with yeah. us. Um, um, we'll be at the premiere tomorrow. Um, nice. Excuse me, fly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, a um, huge fan of yeah. the book. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been it's been really the honor of a lifetime to get to do this with them and not like at them, you know. Um, and that that's really you know sort of the DNA in which we had to do this. And we couldn't do it without them. Yeah. And and you know. I think that it, it does need to be said that we couldn't make this film had Glenn not mm -hmm. made the promises that Glenn made and secured the trust of the families that he secured. And if That's you're right. going to have any sort of standard bearer for dignity, Glenn Powell is about as good as you're going to get. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a mystery to me that they trusted him, mm -hmm. but we couldn't have done, nobody else could have gotten this made. I don't believe that anybody else could have sat down with those families and believed and trusted the goodness of the heart of the person that was sitting across from them. We got Glenn, so we got this, we got the permission, and we get to honor these people. Yeah, which we should actually say, Glenn Axe and executive producer? Yes, but, that's correct. Thank you. We didn't mean to tell you that. <laughs> oh. <Yes. laughs> on them, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you, by the way. That, that, <laughs> That Just means so a lot. Knows. He was pulling double duty on this one. Yeah. No, this is, I mean, th this is a, um, the, the, the events of this story, obviously, there are the events of, of all these people mm -hmm. in the in this story, but it's really a story about an event that bonded two families together forever. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Tom's funeral uh, at Arlington, um, and I was with the Brown family, I was with the Hudner family, and I saw the way they interacted, and I saw what, again, this event that happened 70 years ago still meant to the whole family. And the fact that we were telling the story and telling it at this level and that everyone did it with such heart, such integrity, such honesty, 
And like J.D. said, this is not a, a movie that is told with any tropes. It subverts all the things and it does it with honesty and truth. And that was the thing that I promised them when I sat down at Concord. I was like, guys, this is not going to be the, the movie that tries to do the thing that we've all seen before that does it at the most surface veneered level. Yeah. This is a movie about real people and the people that you love, that you want their legacy to be told in the right way. And I, again, I'm just so proud of this group that I really feel like we did that and I can't wait to show the world that. Yeah, I'm so pumped too. On like a slightly lighter note, what was the most <laughs> fun part about like movie pilot training? Obviously Mr. Powell has, has now done some stuff. Is there a fun part of movie pilot training? Is it, is it a lot of acting? All of it. Oh. Um, it's all fun. I think um, the first day, you, I mean, flying is a real experience. I mean, we don't have wings, do we? You know, it's like, okay, you're going to do it now. And the first time I went up, and the first time I grabbed the joystick, and I was like, okay, it's on now. Like, we're, we're, we're doing this now. You know, it was magical. Um, and that magic was only matched by um, being turned, <laughs> 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 um, you know, in, in, in the aforementioned, you know, uh, 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 aircraft. Um, it's, uh, it, it, that, that was probably the most uh, inc incredible feeling. And then when you, there's a reason why they call, um, and help me with this, why they call uh, pilots gods with zippers. You know, that's what they call them. Once you come from that, now from an airplane, you drive like a madman. You walk <laughs> in the you walk in the And by the way, you did, by like the way. Madman. Like no, no one can tell you anything. You just flew all this and th yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that was very funny. Well J very Jay's fun. always in character start to finish and he shows up, up in a flight suit and I'm like Man, this guy is ready, but I was like, once you get in that warbird, you start spinning. I was like, it's going to be hard to keep character. I was like, let's see if he can handle it. You did. You did. I was, I was very impressed because, again, on Top Gun, we had hours and hours of training, all sorts of different aircraft, and he was thrown in the back of these old warbirds that smell like gasoline, and they're old, and you feel... This, this ain't an F-18. This is, this is you, you feel the mechanics of this plane, and and it's on you, it follows you home, and it makes you drive differently on the way home, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did anyone pursue a real pilot's license like Mr. Powell did after his? Still at it, yes. still at it, yeah. Amazing. Very much inspired by, by Glenn to, to finish it up, yeah. Amazing. And as soon as the movie's out, I'll be right behind, so. He'll be way behind, I'm not slowing yeah, down. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way behind John, yeah. <laughs> Next week we do, we're not even flying commercially here. We're all flying ourselves. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Somebody pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. We got you. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. We're short on time. Is there anything anyone wants to add before we close and move on? See Devotion. Yeah, go see it. Yeah, go see Devotion. Devotion. Um, Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, look, I'll just end on this. Um, it's really... It's really an, like an odd feeling to make a film like the films you've dreamed of making. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think devotion, I, I hope, sits in a few buckets, you know, um, hopefully serving on the action and, you know, serving on the story and our character. Um, but just one piece that's kind of entered my head lately is just that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a notion sometimes that a story that centers on a black character um, is small. Um, and I think part of, part of the fight of devotion um, is to negate that. Um, so that's just, you know, a uh, little morning meditation today. Uh, but uh, yeah, a, another piece I wanted to just, yeah, get to share. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you all so much for Thank being you. here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. Thanks.